Hey guys, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. It's really dark here, so let's uh, speed this up a little bit while we're talking. Um, what are we going to do today? Well, I've got a feeling we're going to Minmus today. Uh, we're also going to spend all this science, and we're going to try and earn more reputation, because we're very nearly near the top of this bar here, and I'd, I'd like to get near the top of that bar. I, no, no real reason, just because I'd like to get to the top of that bar. Right, we've got, wow, 448,000 in the bank. Um, I, I seem to be doing alright for money, I never really seem to encounter any troubles there. Uh, and we're going to come and have a look at, at Jean here and find out what we want to do. Um, like, this is just like the standard one that I take when I'm on my way to anywhere nowadays. So we're going to go for that. I can't be bothered with any of this testing stuff. If I needed like some extra science or stuff, I mean this is definitely the place to find the sciences. Um, Oh, these are all fairly low sciences, actually. Yeah, that, one, that one's not too bad. And that's a launch stability, so that's just like... Oh, you know what, I'm going to take that one anyway, because I'll probably use that. Oh, uh, we're not going to the Mun, um, and I don't think we're going to rescue someone. Uh, not today. Uh, what my plan is, is to go to Minmus. Yes. Yes, no, definitely, we're going to Minmus. Awesome. Is there anything else we can do whilst we're... No, no. No, okay, right. That's about all we can do there. Uh, so, with the target in mind, let's go spend some science. Um, now, what I'm probably going to do is throw the um, processing lab in orbit and then make a small little Minman lander that can go around and pick up everything. So, we'll just kind of like go through all the science bits as long as we don't max out too much. Uh, right, that's okay for now. Um, I definitely want docking because if, you know, if we're going to use the science pod, we need to have dock, uh, docking capabilities. Uh, landing uh, the stability struts, because you've seen how I build. Uh, and what else have we got? We've got an extra 200 science to be spent here. Um, I don't think we need main cell technology quite yet, uh, skipper technology quite yet. But at the same time, maybe, maybe. Uh, what else can we have? Uh, these are nice parts. Better. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe get some space plane bits on the go later on. Um, yeah, I've been looking at some good designs for uh, space planes for rescuing Kermans, but we'll we'll talk about that when I actually get on to to rescuing these guys. Ah, science is a must. Uh, not science, electric is a must. In fact, it would have been nice to be able to get this one as well. But ah, uh, well, we're we're there now. And as I've got extra 55 science to spend, I reckon I'm going to grab all these bits. Um, we can start talking about probes as well. Hmm, interesting. Alright, anyway, so let's get going. Uh, we're going to go to the VAB now, and I'm probably going to speed it up, because it takes me, like, forever to build anything. So, in true classic style, I started putting together this uh, Minmus um, lander and, and science bay, and I realised that I have not bought this monopropellant thing here, uh, which is going to make docking more than a little bit difficult. So what I'm going to try and do is put together a small test program to get just enough science together to do to do that. Now the reason I say that is because somewhere down here this one is worth a massive 40 science all on its own. So we're going to do that. Uh, at the same time, do we get any science from rescuing Harvey? We don't. Well then, stuff Hurley. Uh, we, we don't need him. Uh, what else can we get science for? That's um... That's on a trajectory out, we don't want that. But, in flight over Kerbin... It's, uh... I think that's doable, and that's a massive amount of... of science, so uh, yeah, we're gonna go for that. 140 to 240... Okay, yeah, we can do this. We can do this. Alright, well let's go build a horrible hack together spacecraft that will do uh, meet these requirements. And so away I went, um, literally just went through all the part list and um, found the bits that just got me the science. Um, it did actually take me a couple of goes in the VAB to remember things like <laughs> probe body and stuff like that, stuff that would control it, but that, that's alright, you know, you don't need to see all that, you just need to see this bit, where I put together the standard sort of bulk part of this machine. It's literally just like the coupler on top that needed uh, testing, and uh, at the bottom there we had the... LFB liquid fuel engine we needed to test. Okay, so the testing process wasn't as arduous as some, but I still had little issues like this where my staging was out and I thought things were blowing up. But eventually we centered, settled into this regime. 
a fruity little number that's just going to use brute force to get me all the science that I'm after here. Um, this was more of a test flight than it was actually going to be the main science flight because I wasn't sure whether this could get up into orbit or not. Um, now, without spoiling anything, obviously, I don't really want to go into too many more details, but it, this worked incredibly well. Um, I had the, the, the solid boosters there to try and get me up to this sort of 11 kilometer mark that was needed for the, the liquid fuel test there like that. And now it's just a t case of trying to figure out whether this thing will get into orbit as it is. Uh, it is literally just um, that giant um, liquid fuel engine on the bottom there, a decoupler, a pro body and some solar panels. So it, there's nothing to say that it shouldn't. Um, but then I don't know whether this thing carries enough fuel or not. Given that orbit though, I was pretty confident at this stage. Uh, all that really needed to happen was for me to uh, get, on my, get on my way up to Apple Apps and push myself up into an orbit that would hopefully bring the, all this down back into, uh, into the atmosphere when I was done. Uh, it turned out I couldn't do that, but that, that was definitely my plan at the time. Now the reason I couldn't do that was because every time that I developed an orbital path that put me into the atmosphere, you see the little uh, checklist on the side there, uh, it would say that I wasn't in orbit, which was a little bit annoying. So what we're actually going to do is fast forward a little bit until we find this lovely orbit here that allows us to do the science, or rather the contract to get the science so that we can get the bits to do the ship. So, with the contract complete, we'll worry about the space junk at a later date, and we'll come into the uh, VAB to get a landing crew, a la well, a landing ship together. Um, so my basic idea here is to have a vessel that can go down and do may maybe three, well, I have built three sets of sciences. Uh, this also helps on the way into the, 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 the body, obviously, as well, because we can get high uh, altitude, low altitude, and on the ground science as well. But then when it's done that, go back to the uh, science bay, clean up all the experiments, store, store all the experiments somewhere else, and drop back down and just get everything we can get from Minmus, because Minmus is a nice, easy target here. Um, so, to that end, I've built this vessel. Uh, it seems to have everything I need. It's got like the, the, the two major science best, uh, science experiments in triplicate. Uh, it's also got triple, um, uh, what they call thermometers, yes, thermometers. I keep calling them temperature probes, but they are thermometers. Uh, even though it, I don't need triples, but you know, redundancy is not, not a bad thing, surely. Uh, and then we have the uh, science lab at the bottom. Now, I I didn't take any of the big two meter uh, parts to lift this up with. So we're gonna have to try and build this sort of cradle system around it to take it up there, which I'm feeling fairly confident about. Uh, if we just like stack up loads of stuff and then surely it's bound to work, right? Especially with the revelation recently that I make especially bulky spaceships, especially. There's a lot of spzzz in these noises and that, but there we go. Uh, so I, I'm liking where this is going so far. Definitely need some solid boosters around the outside. And I'm in two minds about whether to um, attach these out, oh, well, give these outside tanks uh, engines. You'll see the, the internal set has engines, but these outside ones are just kind of extra fuel to throw away at any point. Uh, I also put some monoprop in because mainly this is a refuel point for my landing probe. Um, or I'd say mainly. Mainly it's a science lab, but this is also a refuel point, um, which will mean that it needs monoprop to be able to dock repeatedly. Uh, and then comes the arduous task of naming it. And I give to you the travel bag! The most magnificent and marvellous spe uh, specimen of Kerbal engineering as you are ever likely to see anywhere. Look at the majestic way it rises into the sky barely touching the fuel supplies that it has with it for some unknown reason even though we are indeed at full throttle and well burning solid fuels and as we burn through all our solids we brace for staging and now oh, this was the pre-strut version so um yeah it all kind of went a bit wrong things flew into each other and and, and all sorts of wonderful explosions were had uh thankfully I had sort of equipped this with land, well, Kerbin landing capabilities, i.e. parachutes. Uh, and now we just get to watch this first test flight end in, and how it should end. Multitudes of explosions. Wonderful, right? Marvellous. Right, so we'll pick up the next, what, the strutted version of the travel bag's next flight at that staging. Um, I wish I'd said that a bit quicker, we probably would have been at the staging. And now begins the boring process of watching these outside tanks. Um, you will notice that my speed is dropping. 
I don't see this as a terrible thing because it never goes into the minus numbers. Um, but it did get down to 80 from like 150 meters per second. But I see this as kind of a balancing out against the air resistance. Um, I would have liked to have stayed at 150, but it, it kind of works for me. Um, and as I say, we're now just watching these outside fuel tanks trying to climb up pretty steeply because I, I again I'm worried about air resistance on this thing it is massive and I've only got small engines um, but we seem to be having an all right time uh, we're, we're, we're pointed roughly 45 degrees and we're at 24 kilometers my uh, my meters per second are looking good and there goes our next level of staging and that leaves us with the same number of engines but a significantly lighter uh, spacecraft to get up into uh, orbit and it seems to be going well uh, we have the debris up there to worry about at some point but we'll come back to that later as i keep promising i mean we will honestly get back to that we'll send a ship out we'll, we'll try and uh maybe maybe with all the rescued kerbals we could we could put them on cleanup duty we'll put them in a space station somewhere and give them a little vessel where they can fire random bits of debris at each other to destroy each other yeah that, that sounds like a great t great way of dealing with it anyway so minmus is off uh, over that way and i've got got myself in such a weird trajectory that it, well we might as well just pop straight for minmus like that so it's about at this point in the flight that I'm really starting to get worried about how much Delta V I left, uh, have left back in this ship. You'll see that I need to put about uh, 1.3 kilometers um, of, of, of movement onto my vessel, of velocity onto my vessel. I'm not sure what the, what the phrasing is for that. Um, and we've got less than a quarter tank of fuel left. Indeed, there's a third of the tank fuel left and oh. Once again, I got caught out by looking at my total fuel level and not looking at how much the engines had. So rather than just scrapping the entire mission, going back to the drawing boards to do it all again, uh, Jeb are gonna, is going to leave the two boys in the science uh, science bay there, science pod there, and he's going to carry on to Mimus on his own. Because he has this triple triple science ba science capabilities, he can go do the high, low and landed science, so it's, it's worth carrying on, or at least this is my thought process at this point. Um, how are we going to go get those those guys back? Well, that's next, next episode, um, the guys in the science bay, obviously, but we have a much more important mission to be doing now. We've got our main contract to do, and we've got to try and figure out why this maneuver node is um, mucking around so much. If, if When we go back to my map, you'll see that it's kind of flashing on and off a lot even when i get um to sort of the midway point where i want to try and do a, a, a few um maneuvering burns to make sure we, we're matched up perfectly it's still doing this sort of strobe effect which is a little bit annoying i don't know i don't know what's causing this i don't know how to solve this uh, i end up thrusting around in all sorts of weird directions but eventually get something that seems stable uh now i'm spending some time looking for minmus because i always have such a hard time looking for minmus uh i can't find it so we switch to our map view time warp as close to the uh, sphere of influence change as i dare um and then just wait for the the wait for myself to drift across um again i was trying to look for quite a low approach um i could have probably have, have just time warped quite nicely through this but anyway we find ourselves in high altitude it's time to do some science i'll be honest i have no idea where the boundary layer is at what point we cross from high to low um but we are definitely going into a low orbit so we can just kind of go right up here will be high and down at periapse will be low and that should all be good uh, for some reason i cannot scan the temperature i cannot get a thermometer reading uh, up at high altitudes um I'm, I'm not sure if that's intentional if that's a bug it's something that i've had for a little while now um so i've kind of just assumed it is a feature but it might be a bug who knows Okay, so high altitude science done. Uh, our next move is to uh, try and get our insertion burn done. Once again, I time warp my way right past the maneuver node, but that's all right. I mean, we've only gone up a what a couple of couple of tens of meters, maybe a couple of tens of thousands of meters is what I mean. But yeah, whatever. We make our way down to periaps and we just uh, make a small burn to, to get ourselves down. Still, we appear to be high above the surface, which is not good. So we're going to make our periaps even lower and just kind of slow down our orbit a lot so we're not coming screaming in for a landing at ridiculous rates and once i've given myself this rather horrible looking orbit actually i start mucking around with the uh, maneuver node to see if we can get a nice circularized orbit over the so my periaps is over the, the the burning daylight section because i like as much light as i can use to see for landings 
but I give up on that and just go right let's just like slam ourselves down um, well just 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 pick a point and, and burn retrograde really is what I end up doing but first we really need to get that low orbital science so we're just going to spin round a bit and tip well accelerate round a bit until we're told that we are low enough down on the uh, crew reports there to be near near Minmus get Jeb out do some science um, do the ex external experiments that I have on my ship uh, and then well the only thing left to do is land so we point ourselves retrograde check out the map to make sure we're not going too far off kilter and burn for all we're worth uh, bring down our periaps well we're not even going to bring down bring down our velocity uh, until we're looking at like a straight plummet and then try and eyeball ourselves a nice landing site somewhere now the problem with this is my human brain is not equipped for dealing with looking down on a great big terrain like this so I see a, li a light bit and I think that's the flat bit but of course that's not the flat bit that's the slope that the sun is shining upon but we'll, we'll get to that when we get down there obviously because I mean look look you look over that way that looks nice and flat over there doesn't it but it's not it's this ridge up, to up top the ridge that's just disappearing off the bottom of my screen now that's the flat bit that's the bit I should have been aiming for and believe me now I will be remembering that but for now we have to deal with this kind of noobish landing that's going on here uh, I spend almost all my time uh, trying to trim down my orbit and then realize that I'm still on orbital velocity so the s surface is spinning underneath me switch over to um, my service service surface tracker um, and come in for a landing on this horrendous slope but that's all right we've got good we've got good landing legs we've got SAS and we've got a fairly wide and stable ship actually as it goes so now what we need to do is all the sciencing we get out and um, shuffle everything around as we do uh, and go around for a bit of a, a burn on our jetpack and then try and think where would be the most auspicious place to place this flag well obviously two foot away from my spacecraft I mean why wouldn't we uh, I noticed that the, la the ground is the same color of my flag and this is a giant minty ball so after some hardcore sciencing and playing around on Minman's surface uh, we take off and get ourselves in a standard equatorial orbit or at least that's what we start aiming for before I go all right let's scan out a bit and see where the uh, Kerbin planet is oh it's right there I need to be nailing it as fast as possible right now maybe even pull my nose up a bit and there we go there's our return orbit set nice and well easily going to show that sometimes all you need to know is where a, an orbitally body is and you can just kind of point yourself in the right direction and be be fairly confident that where you're going is where you want to go not off to the interstellar darknesses as quite often happens when you eyeball things like that i do not recommend eyeballing things use me use your maneuver nodes people and after waiting far, far too long for Jeb to drift through the voids of space, we come to this beautiful view, the heat shock of returning back to our home planet with all the science we ever collected from Minmus. Not quite as much science as we were planning to at the beginning of this episode, and we are left with quite a few things that need sorting out now. Things like the uh, pro body from our first mission of today's episode and we also need to go rescue Werrigan and his friend that I've forgotten the name of up in the science bay because we don't leave a man in orbit not for that long it's just that down that way lay space madness and at least one dead curve anyway I would like to say thank you very much for joining me for this mission we did this well I think we did quite well. Um, yeah, as I say, I will see you next time where we've got a lot of cleanup to do for this mission. Bye! <laughs>